I don't remember what happened from the minute they were putting the arterial line in, in the, in the ready room to the whole, sur- like I, the whole surgery was a blur to me. I, I don't, I just woke up, you know, with the, with the breathing tube sticking out of my throat, you know, which wasn't a fun thing to do. So I, there was a lack of loss of time there. And, but I, I had this impression that something deeper happened I, that I couldn't remember. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hey, we're back. I'm back. Uh, You're back. <laughs> no rips and rants. Actually, John and I filmed one of these before I went into the hospital, but it, it we only it, it only recorded eight seconds of it. So yeah, so we we um that would have been that could have been the last eight seconds ever. So I'm glad because yeah, yeah. technically you were dead, right? Yes, you know I have I have a crazy story too. I don't know if I should tell it or not, but. It's, well, it I was going to ask it anyway. I wanted to know if you had any visions, any you know connections. Did you talk to anybody while you were out there? Yeah. Well, I I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you my story, and you know, for those of you out there who believe, then you know, then thank you, I've been believing it. If you don't believe, then just dismiss it as me making up a story. But I I will tell you this: I'm not I'm, everything I tell you in the story will be 100 percent accurate. But before I get to the story, you know who came and visited me yesterday? Who? I forgot to take a pic. I, I'm so mad that we didn't take a picture. I'm going to get one with her tomorrow. She's going to come see me tomorrow. So Denise Messino. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. she, How nice. Because she lives down the block. Yeah. She, there's a Crunch Fitness right next door. And she actually um, uh, trains there. So she's always like, uh, if you need anything, I'll come bring you. I said, can you bring me some sushi? She's like, I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get me in trouble. I said, in uh, trouble in the hospital. Yeah, you know, I I did change my um, the uh, you know they, they give you this like special like uh, what is hold on, what is Denise doing here? Hold on a second, let's pull this up. <laughs> losing her mind. No, De- Denise is like the, the coolest person of all time. And if it, I, I'm I'm pr- I'm impressed that your wife allows such a relationship to uh, to continue. Well, they're best friends. They used to train together every day. Oh, no wonder. Okay, cool. I, I love Denise, but you know it's. Well, yeah. I we, we know her as Denise. Every the rest of the yeah. world knows her as a porn star. So yeah, it's, right. it's like I can't pass that on to my you know uh, significant <laughs> others. <laughs> now, her, she she knows Denise. Maybe well, I might know Denise longer, but I think she you know really knows Denise uh, you know better than I do for way much much longer. But yeah, Denise lives in Fort Myers. The problem is it's a little. It's not like around the corner from Cape Coral. It's like forty five minutes, but it's really close to the hospital because the hospital is actually. In um, in Cape, in excuse me, in Fort Myers, where I wish you Oh, cool. All yeah, right, so, so that's the Denise story, and then uh, I'll tell you my my super. Wait, wait, wait. How, what, how do you, how do you feel? How you doing? What you know? What, you, you know, you, uh, here's you, the you don't look dead anymore, so that's good. That's <laughs> I'm sitting in the dark though, so it's, 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 it's a, little, <laughs> a little dingy. I'm trying to, to, to add a little Johnny Bravo ambience to this. <laughs> okay. I just need a spotlight on the side of my face so I can look like uh, the, the set. The setting is so great with the with the yeah. hazmat waste container in the background and the shower. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the deal. Here's the update. So I probably would have gone home already, except, you know, I have a defibrillator in my chest already that like was like a like a backup type of thing, and when they do these surgeries on uh, like you know whether they repair an aortic valve or in my case just the aorta. A lot of times they can mess up some of the, um, and I don't know if it's a mess up is the right term, but they can they can mess with the electrical conduction system of the heart. So that what happens, what happened to me is my upper chambers, my atria are not communicating properly with my ventricles. Okay. So what they want to do is they want to upgrade the device I have in there already, which is kind of pacing me right now. And they want to put in like a three lead one. It's kind of like what it does, it synchronizes your whole heart up electric, electrically speaking. We're not talking about function of the heart. We're talking about how the electrical system, because you don't want the heart contracting out of, you know, 
right. out of uh, sync. Because then it makes the heart out of sync with the two chambers. They got to let go. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Or the upper and the upper, upper and the lower is really what right. it is. Yeah. So, right. because, because then you get poor. Then you don't get good, good cardiac output. Now, whose fault is it? It, ha it Believe me, if you if you know anyone who's had a cardiac valve replaced, a lot of people it happens to. And so, you know, I already had the device in this. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Just swap it out. What are we? Well, wait, wait, wait. You you didn't have the valve replaced though. No, no, I was lucky. They just replaced the aorta. But my oh, point okay. is that the electrical thing was not a big deal to me because I'm like, you know what? My battery, I've had mine for eight and a half years. My battery's only got three years of life left. I'm like, yeah, swap it out, put the new unit in. So, right. But you know me, everything, nothing goes easy with me. So it uh, turns out that the when they try to do it, the I have a blockage in the subclavian vein that is where they run that that wire down into your heart and it it, not, it doesn't matter whether you, in other words it's not the lack of blood supply to the, from the vein that's the problem because it's a superficial vein it's right. the fact that they can't get the wire out the existing wire out or any new wires in because there's some kind of they like scar tissue or calcium or something like that they don't know what it is capsule so right? like a breast implant I don't know. It's, think about it. You got a long vein and then this this little wire running through it. And then at some point it got pinched off. I don't know how. Oh, OK. I, said, how come I don't have any problems. They're like he's like, because you have he said, I've never seen a vein, a network of veins in a person's body like yours. He said. <laughs> Whenever I go through, your, I was going through your groin because, you know, they use when they do an open heart, they'll go through your groin so they can visualize things better. He's like, I was getting lost. I couldn't get to your heart. <laughs> There's so many like tributaries that your body has grown over the years. <laughs> Usually it's a straight shoot. He goes, not it's so good. Not you. You had catacly yeah. catacombs in there. <laughs> he said, because your offshoots are as big as normal people's, you know, like main veins, you know, yeah. main artery. So, <laughs> so to make a long story short, he's they did a CT scan today with contrast to look at the vessels and Sure enough, there is a blockage, which as they suspected. Now, supposedly, I'm waiting. I hope he takes on the case. Hopefully, by Tuesday, um, this guy, Dr. Burton, he's like the expert. And he can clear, from what I understand, he can clear the any kind of like these little calcium blockages. He'll drill it out or they laser it out. I don't know. And then they can take the existing lead from my existing pace uh, pacemaker defibrillator in there. Because I only have a single lead in there. And they could actually put a three lead one in there, which is going to be better for me. So it's not, it's not like I'm going to know I have any anything different other than I'll have like, you know, I won't be able to reach over my head for, you know, a couple of weeks. Right. But I'm kind so of like that. So, that. so that procedure they were going to do the other day at two o'clock, they didn't do. No, they, they it, well, they had me down there. Believe me, they were starving me all day. They did it at four and they put me on there for th like 10 minutes and then they woke me up and I'm like, I just have this feeling I wasn't under that long. He's like, you were. <laughs> I didn't want to cut you open unless I knew I had access to that vessel. He said, I was trying to run wires through. It wasn't, there wasn't going through. So, wow. um, so yeah, they got to go in there and, uh, and supposedly, uh, hopefully on Tuesday, do that. And you have to stay in the hospital then until Tuesday. Well, I'm, I don't want to go home because I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm too scared. I'm like, I don't want to throw some crazy weird arrhythmia or something like that. And well, while I'm, cause you know me and I'm a hypochondriac. So I'll, I'll be thinking I'm throwing arrhythmias day and night you know <laughs> in here i'll go walk the hallways if i feel like i'm gonna pass out they'll they, they get they get a seat on the heart rate monitor and right, they're gonna right, come right. Me, so. um now I'm is all that wireless now the or the, they can monitor you while you're walking yeah. around or just walking yeah around the thing with you wire, totally why they change the batteries every day it's totally wireless. wow that's so cool it's like the sennheiser microphones we use it's uh <laughs> double a bat they put four double a batteries in there and that's it so wow and uh, you know that's where I, here, here's my little scar. Let me see if you can see it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. Well, that's just the top of it, but yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't go down that much further. I don't know if you can see it. Right? Yeah. Oh, you so, got to get you got to get a cool tattoo over that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think it's not. I think it's going to disappear. I don't think it's going to even really be too bad. And get, I don't like know a, that, get like a zipper tattooed on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in my life, John, I, I really didn't give tattoos. You like zip your whole big body off. Yeah. Okay. The story. The story. Yeah. Let's get. They're going to come in and, and interrupt. So here's, the, here's the story. So when I woke up, I was on the heart lung machine for a good amount of time, three and a half hours. And the heart lung machine's job is to take Start your blood the and put it, take it out of your body, oxygenate it, put it back into your brain only. 
the rest of your body is is dead essentially. They turn off your heart. They actually, you know, the same way they would put it. I'm, I, I know. I, by the way, I want to just send my condolences out to you and your wife for losing your dog because I know how difficult that is. Uh, I've down two dogs also in the last. Two, two dogs died on me in the last two weeks. So we do um, everything. They basically stop your heart. You know, once they got you on the heart lung machine, and then because they can't work on the pump, or as my my doctor likes to say, I'm the best. I'm a plumber. That's all I am. Can't do the plumbing with, without turning off the water. You know, so. <laughs> while they're doing that though they got you um you know they got you on a slab of they they cool your body temperature down so that nothing you know happens to those organs and then at some point they turn you back and when i when i woke up um there was such a i don't remember what happened from the minute they were putting the arterial line in in the, in the ready room to the whole sur- like I, the whole surgery was a blur to me i i don't i just woke up you know with the with the breathing tube sticking out of my throat you know, which wasn't a fun thing to do. So I, there was a lack of loss of time there. And, but I, I had this impression that something deeper happened I, that I couldn't remember. And every time I would, and when I saw my sister for the first time, you know, when she came into the room, I was hysterically crying. And I don't know why it was not, it, it was just something about her face or something. It, I mean, literally I was, I was unconsolably crying and I, I couldn't figure it out why. Your mom, so, you saw your mom. That's why. What you saw your mom. Oh, I probably that's you know that was my uh, impression. So, but I didn't have any evidence. So, so what I noticed over the first three days I was in ICU is that when I would close my eyes, you know how sometimes you close your eyes and you can see weird lights, right? If you close them kind of lightly, well, when I would close my eyes and I was looking straight ahead, I was seeing this like copper tapestry, and that had these little squares in them and. Each square, I would I, I start out where I would, where a random square would pop up and I would see my, a picture of my father, but at different stages of his life. And then it would, these randomly popping up squares would, would change to pictures of my mother and then other people that I, I assume were my relatives, but I didn't know who they were. So I don't know. I, it still didn't make any sense. This whole thing didn't make sense to me. Now, so wait, so this is this is days later. This is happening. This is, this is about two in the first within the first two days of me waking okay. up. All this right. would happen. And the first three days I was there, or four days, every time I would go to sleep, I would have this same dream about solving puzzles. Now, now I'm talking about puzzles with puzzle pieces. I'm like video games where you have to collect pieces of things and put them together and assemble them together. And for some reason, Kai Green, (laughs) I kept seeing Kai Green's face now. I don't know why. (laughs) Maybe I had to collect his glutes or something like that. I don't know. But (laughs) it was just, it it was a torturous dream because. I couldn't sleep relaxed because every I would wake up in utter anxiety because I'm like, I can't this dream pre- please stop. Wow. And, yeah, it was weird. So I thought I was thinking so I, I, over the next couple of days after I was percolating thinking about it and I um uh, I brought it up to my sister and I said, I said, you know, I th- I think that um my brain is trying to remember uh, something that had happened to me. And of course my sister's I don't know if you know this about my sister. My sister's become does readings now. She's like, oh psychic. really? Yeah, yeah. She's gotten really developed her skills. Though. She always had like premonition type stuff, but she really has been developing them. She does readings. People pay her. They love her. No. So kidding. yeah. So before I went into surgery, I said to her a couple of weeks ago, I said, "Look, I'm a scientist. Okay. Do I believe in the spiritual world? Yes, I do. But I'm a scientist first. I said, if I'm gonna, if I'm going under." And they're going to put me essentially to death for a couple hours. I said, I need proof. Okay. If, if something happens, because I know I won't remember because they'll, they'll, they'll blank my memory just so that I, I can function as a human being. <laughs> it's, a human being. <laughs> it's a human being the rest of my life. Cause otherwise I'll become one of these, you know, like crazy people. So right. I said, this is the experiment. I am going to write down a code word. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm telling anyone I'm writing it down. I'm going to put it in my safe at home. OK, I don't think I told my sister, I told Amanda where I was putting it. I said, I, and then if, if I have any kind of an encounter and you get any kind of like premonition, like if you talk to our, one of our deceased relatives like you, you do normally and you give me this code word, then I'll know that I actually had a real encounter because otherwise I could just be making it up. Right. Because maybe it was just wishful thinking. So. We're going through all this stuff telling her about the puzzles, the puzzle dreams. 
I'm telling her about the, the, the little tapestry where I'm seeing daddy and my, my father and my mother's face. And I said, I, I, you know, I think I might have like had some kind of like reconnection with them. I said, did you have, did the, did the code word ever come through for you? You know, and I, I hadn't talked to, I hadn't even brought it up to her. She, I don't I didn't know if she remembered. She's like, you don't know, no, I, I, you know, I, I, nothing came to me. It was kind of weird. She goes, but she, my sister's not one to just guess randomly. You know, she, it either it came to her or it didn't come to her. Right, right. And I said, oh, all right. I said, I, she's like, I still believe, I truly believe you, you had some sort of a, an encounter with, with, you know, our parents, I said, because, you know, your emotional response to me had to be from seeing our mother, you know, because right. they look right. alike. And so I said, you know, and it was comforting. It, was, it felt great. So we talked about this maybe two days ago. Last night I was laying down sleeping. I, I, I conned them into giving me a Xanax finally. And I, I was having, I couldn't, I can't lay down and sleep. So it's the only thing that really bothers me. Um, I, I get like short. Because of the short, your lungs aren't open you all the way yet. You know, they're pretty open, but I think I'm, I still have fluid in there that when I lay down, it kind of is uncomfortable. And I start gasping. I wake up gasping for air. So I, yeah. I went into the chair and I, I can sleep in the chair because I, I still, the Xanax was working pretty, pretty well. And I said, oh, let me look at my phone. I look at my phone because I had gone to bed pretty early, like 10 o'clock, which is early for me. Not early for any of the other lunatics in this hospital who go to bed at like six o'clock, but you know, <laughs> hey, that's early. So, <laughs> so I look at the text message and my sister sends me a text. She's like, I don't know if this is it. This came to me out of nowhere. I saw mommy showing me this shoe box and she got the word right. The, 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 code, word, the code word was I, I, kid Geppetto. And I'll tell you what it means. That's when way she, too obscure a word for it. Well, let me explain. Let me say it. When she was a, a little kid, I used to torture her, just like all big brothers do their sisters. <laughs> and I used to call her kid. She hated when I called her kid, kid. And one day my I was looking up in my mother's like uh, closet. She had these pair of shoes called Geppetto shoes. And I said, I said, and then I started calling her Geppetto and she didn't like it. And then I put the two together just to make it even more of an insult. This, this is why my sister and I don't get along. No, I'm just kidding. And I said, I said, I used to call a kid Geppetto and she hated it. So, you know, when I was going to pick something as a code word, I said, I got to pick something that she would never guess because she would, it would be something negative rather than positive. Because, you right, know, if I right. said red, code red or something like that, it's too, yeah. <laughs> it got to be something like that, 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 our you know relatives would know also that would be able to show her something. So right. I picked this 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 word. I wrote it down. It's in my safe at home. And um, so she says, "Yeah." She's like, "You know, I was I was just sitting around, and all of a sudden I saw mommy's face telling me, why are you letting him bother you?' Geppetto's Geppetto's are sh my shoes in the closet." And she used to always tell her that she would, they would try to, my mother would like, try to like, you know, help her like, you know, you know <laughs> mess with me a little bit, you know, and uh, she's like, so I didn't know if that's what it is. She's like, she's like, I just, it was so random. She's like, I just had to mention it. So she, there was no guesses. It was just that. And I, and I said, holy shit. Now she was probably sleeping at this point because it was like midnight. And I said, holy shit. I said, you're, you're, you're right. I said, you're right. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> So then in the morning when she read it, she went crazy, you know, because she, wow. you know, and so that, that's my, my science experiment, my spiritual science experiment that I did, believe it or not, I have no reason to lie about it. I'm telling you hundred percent the truth. Uh, that is, uh, that is what happened. So well, I, 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 wait, so Amanda looked in the safe and confirmed it. It's the, that's, there's, well, she, she hasn't, she, she, she's, you know, she's not so much of a believer, but she, she's, uh, she hasn't confirmed yet because I'm not home, but she can look in the safe. It's in there. But did she know, is, did she know the code word prior? I didn't tell anyone the code word. She wouldn't okay. even have known what the, she would not have even have known what the code word even meant. So, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, and I don't even know if I told her I put it in the safe, to be honest. I put it in there just, I figured if I die, they'll, they'll find it, uh, you know. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> it's a password to some seek account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so it, it was it was a good feeling because I I, I do truly truly believe I had some sort of some sort of supernatural experience while I was on the heart lung machine, you know, and, and technically, you know, dead. maybe not not biologically dead, but I was I was pretty close to it. I feel like I probably left my body and I and I had some sort of an encounter with some deceased relatives. No. 
is it true or not? I don't know. I'll tell you one thing though. Something happened because you know, <laughs> I, 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 there's just the puzzle solving with the dreams. The, it was just, I knew, and I, you know, you just know something is not, I'm like, there was too much of a lack of, of, of time that was went by that. I just, I felt like something happened that I just, I'm not remembering. It was driving me crazy. And as soon as I kind of dealt with that, I stopped having those crazy uh, puzzle dreams, believe it or not. Really? So, yeah. So yeah. Do that. Your subconscious yeah. was trying to tell you something. Well, yeah. now, see, that's interesting because it, it it was your body that was dead, not your brain. So, But right. you were deep, deep under anesthesia yeah. at that point. Right. So do you think your brain made the connection that, wow, my body's dead. My, my, my brain is just hanging on by a couple of, you know, hits of oxygen every now and then. Right. And, I'm, and I'm dead too. You know, is, right. is it because you were so close to death? Do you think that's why? I think, I think that our spirits or whatever you call them, souls, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, that are tethered to our physical bodies. And when our physical bodies are in good health, you know, it, it's, it's solid, solidly in there. But I think when you get close to death, and that's why we hear about all these near-death experiences where people say they, they talk to relatives, they saw things and angels. So I think that when you're when you're closer to death, you'll have these experiences. And because I was, even though it was induced, it's like that movie. You ever see that movie Flatliners? Yeah. Remember how cool that was? They 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 tried yeah, yeah. to keep for Sutherland. Yeah, yeah they, they, they would they would like keep flatlining themselves for like longer and longer. Push it longer and longer and longer. Yeah. Yeah, because they wanted to see what would happen after they uh, after they had no brain activity. So I I think that I you know, I think that you you're you're you have more ability to leave your body and come back, go back and forth when your body is not you know is on the verge of death. Now, like I said, whether it's induced or not, that's a different story. You know, you could have a car accident be on the verge of death, and you might have a near death experience. It wasn't caused by you know a physician putting you under anesthesia. But I don't know if you, I don't know if the God you. Know, I don't know if anyone knows the difference. I think it's, it's just a matter of whether um, how alive you are, so to speak, in terms of, you know, the functioning of your body. I think when your body ceases to function, you, your, your, you know, your spirit, whatever, leaves that, uh, you know. No, I always say, I, we're, I always say right. we're spiritual beings having a human experience, you know. that's, well, that's right. well, see, that's that, that's the whole thing. It's the, the, the energy that powers that spiritual being. It's... It's it's intangible. It's net. It's out here. It's it's not anything solid. It's just feelings and emotions and thoughts and and you know instincts and 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 things like that that are that are part of our consciousness and, and our subconscious. So I think I find that you, how does that is that only only all only supported by the brain or is there actually an external force that continues that? energy drive to the spirit that can makes it, you know, carry on or carry on to some degree. Obviously I don't think you get it all back, but you know, I, I, I don't think know. brain is, is the ultimate determination of whether you're alive or not. So right. if you cut the brain off, you know, you're, you're pretty much not, a, you know, you're not really there anymore. Although I guess if you keep the part of brain function, like the, the, or, you know, the, the stuff that controls all your organs and, and you can, in other words, you can sever certain parts, but if your brain is dead, you're dead. You know, your 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 spirit is going to leave that that physical right. And 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 what I'm and per perhaps there is some form of energy that the universe can channel to that yeah. spirit to keep it. So you kind of it's like a handoff. Your brain your brain dies, but the spirit is that intangible thing that requires yeah. that kind of energy, and it hands off to the. Whatever powers the universe is throwing out there, if if you're susceptible to it, if you're open to it, I guess. Yeah, and like I don't profess to know anything, you know. I'm just giving I'm just giving you my experience, you know. Cool. Uh, I don't I don't really know what happens. But it, I mean, we could, you know, I don't want to be I don't want to pretend to be an expert on this because I don't think there are any experts on this. But I think it is cool, and I think you know our brain obviously cont contains our physical body's memories, but I think our spirit has our the memories of every you know every life we've lived and everything else in there. So, you know, that never disappears. That's uh, just my belief. Just, I, but, uh, I, I had a kind of a cool experience once that, that I don't know if it's not, a, it's not on par with what you experienced, but it was kind of interesting how the brain works. I, I was about, 
I, and when I was probably six or seven, we I had these metal roller skates that clamped onto your sh shoe, and then I had them. You had them too, and, we, had and the basement yeah. floor was glass smooth. So we had the wall over here, and then the washing machine. Your the floor, your skates also like metal metal wheels. Yeah, metal wheels. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. all metal, 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 metal. Oh, I think, yeah, they were right. You're right. Yeah, they were all metal. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so we would, my sister and I, we, well, I'm usually just me, and start at the wall and skate towards the washing machine and the dryer, which at the time felt like 100 yards, but it was probably only yeah. about four feet, right, in real life. And then do this turn, right, and then spin on the skates and then slam into the, in, into the washer dryer. And it was like, you know, I'm six, five, six doing that, you know, right. and, there was there was the in order for the skate to fit your shoe, my sister and I would trade off. You had this yeah. key, right? Key, and the key, key would, yeah. right? Open the nut, you know, loosen the nut, and then you clamp it onto the shoe and you tighten with the key. Yeah. Well, of course, I lost the key, right? So uh, once I lost the key, it, it was on her size, and I couldn't. I had to wait for my father to come home to do it with a wrench, and you know. But anyway, the key, yeah. the key was gone. When I was about. 30 okay or no i wasn't i wasn't available when i was 30 probably the late 20s late 20s i was i was riding one of my motorcycles like a fucking lunatic through the canyons and i had a really close call with an oncoming car who was over over the yellow line and you know how they say well you know people see the life flash flash in front of them when they have like that. I thought I was going to die. All I could see was a bumper. I was leaning way over and my shoulders almost on the ground and there's a bumper heading towards my head, you know? Uh, and yeah. and I, it was just, I mean, I could feel the, 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 the wind, you know, it was like that close. But anyway, in that moment, when I thought I was going to die, I found the key. You knew, exactly, <laughs> I knew exactly where that skate key was. It's just like, oh, it was it was on the it was a little shelf behind the dryer that 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 I used to and it had what had happened was the last time I put it up there it pushed too far behind and I couldn't I couldn't see it and I couldn't reach it. That's what came into your head as you were gonna die. The key. The key. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a good story. It's a pretty good story. I like it. <laughs> so. I found it. Now I, there was no way to verify that you know. I felt, but I, it was like it solved the. And yeah, I, I, that's exactly. I know, and I remember. That's where I put it. Yes, that's where it is. You know. Did you find any socks while you were at it too? <laughs> no, I, I found I found things in crazy places that I, I never. I don't even know why it just came to me out of where. Like I'd be, I'll be walking. I'm like, I think the so and so is in the so and so, and and sure enough, <laughs> sure enough. you know, yeah, it's bizarre. It, 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 there's definitely stuff to this world that we don't know about that that goes on, and uh, you know, and that's the mysteries of the universe. Is uh, I always say is uh, something that's awesome, and you know, I want to, I you know, and I and I and I believe in God too. I don't, I'm not like a, I don't not believe in God. I just think that you know, I don't really believe in you know certain religious you know you know doctrines, but I I definitely believe there's a God, and you know, everyone who prayed for me, you know, no matter what religion they were praying from, it it, it absolutely helped. I believe because. Sure. There was so many people out there saying positive, you know, prayers and stuff like that for me. So, thank you all for that. So, how so the plan is, I'll spend the weekend here, which is not the end of the world. I do my work here, you know. I'm, I'm I got food, you know. They're feeding me. I got them. I changed the whole diet, by the way. I I, call, I told the woman, I said, look, I'm not in. A, I I have no blockages in my coronary arteries. I don't have a cholesterol. Matter of fact, my cholesterol is too low. I said, <laughs> I need more food. She's like, you know what? She's like, I'm getting you off the cardiac diet. I said, okay. She's like, just um, here's the menu. You call down an order. Just don't. I don't want you loading up your food with sodium because you know I, I'm still on diuretics. So they're trying to get rid of all that fluid. I said, yeah, that's fine. It's like a post. It's like a post. You know how when you you after you, you contest diet for a show and you're like, yes, can't wait to eat everything. You eat everything and then you retain like 40 pounds of fluid and then you got to go back on the contest diet. <laughs> so I'm getting for breakfast. I'm getting double scrambled eggs. I'm getting Ooh, wow. uh, grits. Or Great. oatmeal, and eggs, okay, and a fruit and a fruit plate, and uh, for lunch I get uh, usually two chicken breasts, like double big chicken breasts, double rice and and corn, and uh, another little usually some grapes or some other fruit, and you know they bring me some decaf coffee for breakfast, and then and then at, at night I usually get fish, usually salmon or pollock, double serving of that uh, with ri double serving of rice and corn and. Uh, than the fruit plate. So 
what I do is I divide each meal into two meals. So I'm actually eating probably more right now than I ever have eaten in the last five, six, seven years. I'm eating six times a day. I have, you know, my small portion of meals. And then at night, sometimes I'm still having like a Quest, you know, a protein bar or something like that or a Quest cookie or so. And you know what the funny thing is, John? I'm starved all the time. I really believe because of the, the trauma of the surgery, my, you know, your body just needs a lot more protein to repair itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Much more than normal, sure. Yeah, and especially you're still servicing a lot of mu muscle mass too. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, before I went in for the surgery, I was like, maybe I shouldn't train like the two days before the uh, the surgery. I'm like, maybe I'm just gonna like, cause more of a protein, you know, uh, rift in my body. I said, you know what? Who knows what I'm gonna train next? I'm going to the gym. So that was like, <laughs> that's good for you. Spoken yeah. like a true bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I'm, I wasn't skipping. And the funny thing is the surgeon guy, he works out. He's like, you know, he's like, you know, I got to tell you, you know, your, your aorta is going to be solid after this. He says, you, you know, once you get through the first eight weeks of like sternal precautions, because they want to make sure the sternum, you know, because it's bone right. to bone, they want to make sure it heals properly. He's sure. like, you're going to be able, you're going to be able to do whatever you want to do. He's like, you know, there's no, there's no like future restrictions on you in terms of having to watch how much weight you're lifting and then holding your breath and all that other stuff that you were going through you know, when you had the aortic aneurysm that we were watching for three and a half years. I said, well, I guess that's a good, that's a good trade-off. <laughs> and what a relief. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, that's yeah. like, you don't have to worry about that, that thing anymore. You know, bl blowing the O-ring is always, Jimmy the bull. Now he, he's, he needs to get one, his check. Yeah. Because if any, I if anybody's got, if anybody's got a dissected aorta potential for it, it's got to be him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the aortic dissection thing, the, which is the aortic aneurysm, which means that the, aneur the aorta gets too large and then it can split, is is not something that's that uncommon. I thought it sounded like, who the heck gets this thing? You know, I'm like always, I'm always like, why am I getting, do I get all these weird things? It's not that uncommon. A lot of really? people have, now more people have problems with their aortic valve, um, which is the uh, the valve that goes from the uh, left ventricle of the heart to out to the aorta and that and a lot of people need the valve replaced which is the same surgery essentially because i guess they got to open you up and right. shut your heart off and all that which stuff. is the one they were debating whether or not to do with you or right not. they spared right. mine thank god so i don't have to worry about that Good. that, that would have been a big so, valve right? yeah, but, but the, the, the point is yeah they they either do a tissue or pig valve which they call it a tissue valve or they do a mechanical valve the mechanical valve obviously um you have to take blood thinners the rest of your life and it makes a clicking sound. So I, I would, I wasn't opting for that one anyway, even if I had to go, I would have gone with a tissue valve. Arnold has a tissue valve. Uh, yeah. I think he had his replaced once too. Pretty sure. Well, yeah. He had two surgeries. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not something anyone wants to go through, but you know, people get through it. There's, there's 90 year old people in this hallway here and then they're getting through it. But you know, so now I'm, so now they, they, they want you walking and moving around so you don't get a blood clot and all that stuff. Right. So I'm doing laps, but you know, you know, my obsessive compulsive nature. I'm like, all right, I, I did five, I did three laps yesterday. I got to do, you know, around the cardiac ward that is, you know, I'm like, I got to do four today and then I got to do five tomorrow, you know, and that now I'm up to like, like eight or nine laps. And, it, and you wow. know, it's, it's now it's taking a long time. It's now it's not like, it's not like me going out for a five minute stroll. You know, now it's like, and people are starting to say you're still walking. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know when they tell when the, when the, when the nurses are feeling guilty that you're doing more exercise than them. You know, yeah, you got to do thirty minutes of cardio. You know, like that's how I would look at it. You know, that's just, that's exact. I'm at that point where I don't even want to like even count the laps because I I can't even right. keep track. I want to just go do twenty minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you can start integrating. Then you can start integrating stairs. You can go upstairs up to the next floor and then down. The physical therapist took me to the stairs, and I I walked up three flights, no problem. But you know what? When I, after the third flight, I was like a little winded though. Wow. Um, but I it wasn't. It really wasn't that bad. Um, so I, I think my cardio is coming back, and they had to give you this little inspirometer to breathe into, like you got to suck into it, and it raises a little ball all the way up. I don't know if you've seen these things. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To help your lung capacity. So I I couldn't even get past a thousand like the first. I got to I think twelve hundred the first day, and they're like, "Whoa, that's better than most people." I'm like thinking, this is like. 90 year old like you know <laughs> lung capacity so now i'm up to like 3500 so i'm like almost back i'm almost oh, wow. at the, the, 
moment that the well, of course I want to get to the top of the thing so I can show that the nurses that I can do the top of the thing. So now you know, is that is that from your lungs being collapsed when when you were dead? Yeah, yeah. It, the best, and I think I explained it on heavy muscle. Radio, the best thing I could explain to you is if anyone has had COVID, and when you try to take a breath in and you, you feel like you, you you have like a lung restriction. It's like almost like it hurts a little bit. It, that's that's what it felt like originally, and uh, now I don't really have that feeling anymore. Uh, but when I'm walking, sometimes I get a little. I feel like my lungs a little bit, you know. And th once again, here's the problem, John. They love to dose you with with Lasix here, but I got to the <laughs> point where I was like getting too dehydrated, or it felt like I was. So yesterday, my weight didn't really change very much all day, and I didn't let them give me a shot of Lasix. So I thought I was out of the water. And then I tried to sleep last night, and I told you I couldn't fall asleep because I was felt like I was drowning, you know. So uh, I took another shot. I let him give me a shot this morning, and I peed my brains out, you know. <laughs> and it's like it's like two milligrams, and you still you pee like a racehorse on that stuff. Wow. And uh, so and I so I, I and I actually feel a little depleted today. So I, you know I'm gonna I'll, maybe I'll do it once a day in the middle of the day, just so I don't have to like be up all night peeing and stuff like that. Your face and your neck look really lean. Yeah, I think I think my arms look finally look lean to my she, Amanda said when I came out of surgery, I looked like I was like in the old 300 pound days, except I didn't have any veins. She said. <laughs> well, I, who could imagine Dave Palumbo with no veins? That yeah. that's like imagining an, an, an orange growing on a tree with no skin. That's I like was so fluid retentive, and that's, that's normal. They said coming off you know the heart lung machine and off, off that surgery, so. It's not a surgery I would ever want to do again, but to put it this way, but you know what? If you can face that, you can do anything. There's really nothing that you can't do at that point. Uh, Were you, you know, on an actual block you know, of ice? Hmm? Were you on an actual slab of ice, a block of ice? I don't know. Because like I said, what happened was the guy came in and he's like, I'm gonna, I have to put some arterial lines in your arm. This was in the waiting room right before the surgery. And I said, okay, there was the anesthesiologist. I said, he, I said, you think he can give me something to relax me? I said, because well, I am a little nervous. I said, I know, I, I know what's going to happen. I, I, the whole idea of going into the operating room is, is he's like, I'll, I'll give you something now to relax you. I woke up and I, I, I don't remember anything else. So they must have taken me in. They had to have helped me go from the stretcher into onto the table. I have no recollection of it. I have no memory of it. Wow. It's wiped clean from my brain i'm thank god it is I, I don't remember any of it what was it that they gave you like versed versed yeah. yeah versed yeah that stuff is 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 a, is a wonderful drug <laughs> i i'm sure it's not good if you abuse it but it's a wonderful drug I, I, i'm sure i'm sure there's a lot of guys who would like to get their hands on that <laughs> <laughs> some good shit you know you're not going to remember what you did after you took it but yeah yeah good. No, so, nor does the other person. <laughs> the only enjoyable part of, of any kind of surgery is when they about thirty seconds before they put you out, you know, as they're giving right. you the uh, the IV and they're filling it up, and they're like, "All right, we're putting it into the IV," and I'm like, "All right, enjoy this." <laughs> like, <let's> go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you fall fast, you know. So, so, so you go out pretty quickly. Yeah, and that's it. And that you know, that was really the uh, that was the experience so far up to this point. I didn't want to go home, like I said, because there's no reason to at this point. You know, it's just, I'm just going to stress out everyone at home, and I'm going to stress myself out. And you know, once you leave the hospital, you lose priority on everything. You know what I mean? Because now I have to schedule appointments and come back. And I'm like, look, I'll stay here. My surgeon was fine with me staying here. Uh, I said I'm too scared to go home. I give him bullshit. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to have. And I said, I'll stay here and hopefully they can, you guys can get me in the schedule on Tuesday. So that's that's the plan. Once right. that's done, I'll probably go home the next day. So that's a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. And then I could, you know, you know, do my thing, start rehabbing and, and everything. Start, and start climbing back for real. Yeah. The, you know, the only thing that, you know, when you're home and you start and, and you're not, you know, I really wasn't in pain to be honest with you, except for the first three days a little bit. I, I haven't taken any pain meds since then. And the problem is you start doing things, you start doing too many things. I have to be careful that I don't start lifting shit and mm -hmm. moving stuff around. When you're in the hospital, they do everything for you. You know, you, do you need me to do anything, uh, Ms. Dave, uh, Dave, Mr. Palumbo, whatever? Oh, can you get me the, this? Can you get me that? You know, at home, that ain't, <laughs> that's not happening at home, you know. <laughs> get it yourself. Our <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> anything you want here. It's like the, the night, I mean, the staff has been, outstanding here i can't can't give them wow. any better stellar uh rave reviews so cool. that's uh, yeah. 
that, that's been my week. What have you guys been doing? I, I, I saw a part of it most of the after hours. You guys did a good job with it. Oh, good. You said it was great working with Sid, man. I, I, I missed him. You know, he's yeah, he's very professional. Very professional. He's just good at what he does, you know. And and uh, yeah, that that was yeah. plus we you know we got to reconnect. I hadn't talked to him in a long time, so it was good to talk to him. And um, yeah, yeah, I thought you know um, Johnny Bravo never showed up, so uh, as you know, so of course, um, yeah. I, I didn't think he would, but you know, whatever. Um, I, I I relayed. What's his name? Did you know? Yeah. Did you know? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and um, you know, yeah, I relate. I relate to everyone exactly what you said. So you know, I don't want to piss off any of the peanut gallery. Real Romano said this, and it was like that. No, so his exact word for word what Dave said. So um, the, the, there's no, there's no confounding that. And you know, it, it was cool. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to getting back. You know, hopefully, you know, we'll do. I don't know what we'll do Tuesday. I guess we'll do the same thing. You, you, right? You'll probably do it again on Tuesday, yeah, yourselves, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do like heavy muscle radio with Chris on Sunday, just because I don't have. I, assuming I don't have surgery, yeah, you know, Monday morning. Although maybe I'll just do it during the day with them, like I'm doing with you right now, because obviously. Yeah. It looks like the connection is kind of stable here, so you never. Pretty know. good so it's far, man. Oh, really stinks! My the, the computer has a better, I guess, maybe antenna on it. It's, it picks right. up the Wi-Fi, but so pretty good so far. <laughs> yeah. So, so the kids are coming this weekend again, and uh, yeah, they they love to come see me and, and touch everything in the room. You know, I'm sure they ride the bed up and down, right? They, <laughs> my wife doesn't let them do that, but they 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 they, they get a little. They want to. They want everything, and they got the. They got the nurses bringing them, you know, diet ginger ales and, and <laughs> yeah. The first five minutes, it's good, and then, then you know, yeah. once you shift into grown up time, then they they're yeah. bored, you know. <laughs> get the wheelchairs and let, put let them roll. Yeah, the I, said, you know, I said, look, just take them by, bring them by for twenty minutes. It's fine. Just so I think, I think when once they see you, it's 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 a, you know, I've been on Facetime with them, but once they see you, it's a lot. Yeah, a lot more tangible. And you know me, I'm a good actor. So even when I even the first time they came, I was I didn't feel that great. I was like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, I miss you. Yeah. And so and that then, makes, then, puts them at rest at ease. You right. Know? Good, good. So they, yeah, that's good for them. You know, they need to be able to no, be no, not stressed about this. You know, that's yeah. good. They got this restaurant um, in this right in this area. I got to get Denise to stop there and pick up some food for me. It's called the Slurping Dragon. It's a it's the greatest name for a restaurant. It's like an Asian place. It's, <laughs> it's like Chipotle except for, with Asian food. Like you can get oh, like wow. raw tuna, raw uh, salmon, and on a salad, and they give you rice. You know, you pick you mm -hmm. pick different sides, and they make bowls. You know, and stuff like that. Yeah. I love this place so much, but it's not that close to my house. So the only time I ever go to it is when I'm in Fort Myers. I have to go to a doctor's appointment or something like that, or I have to pick some. I have to go to FedEx or something like that. So, so Denise has been asking, "What do you want?" I said, so "I haven't told her." So far, I've been saying, "Denise, I, I don't need anything. I don't need anything." So this weekend, I know I'm going to be stuck here. I'm gonna <laughs> stop at this place called the Slurping Dragon. This is what I want. That's funny. Yeah. That's awesome. I hope you get doubles. <laughs> <laughs> always, you got to get two. You always got to. If you're a real bodybuilder, you'll never just order one meal. Uh, when no. I went to eat with Ronnie Coleman, uh, I remember, I'll never forget this. It was we were guest posing in Fargo, North Dakota together, of all places. Wow, this had to be in 2002, I would say. So Ronnie was a guest poser, I was a guest poser, and they we we guest posed. You know, we knew each other from Metrics days, and but Ronnie was Mr. Olympia at this point. We go to uh, they take us to Outback to eat or something like that, or one of those like you know similar places, and Ronnie orders two meals. Because Ronnie always ordered two meals. Right. I'll take the chicken and the steak, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tons of barbecue sauce. So he would get the chicken and he would order two entrees. And I never wanted to be a glutton. So I, I never wanted to be like, uh, like I was like trying to take advantage. So I would get my meal. But I would get a lot of extras on the sides and stuff like that. So Ronnie's eating. And, he, and he's, you know, we're both wearing like those. You remember those NPC cutoff like shirts they had? They used to sell their yeah. like, pl like plaid shirts. And they were cool. And, yeah, you know, if you had good arms and shoulders, they, they, they looked huge. Yeah. And so we both were oiled up because we had just, just guest posed. And Ronnie's looking across at me and he's staring at me the whole time. I'm like, Ronnie, what's going on? He goes, man, he goes, remember now, he's got to be, he's Mr. Olympia probably four times at this point. He's like, how do you stay so lean? <laughs> now, I, Ronnie looks pretty damn lean too, you know. Right. I said, do you have the audacity to ask me that? I said, how did you get, 
How did you get 27 inch arms? I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Your mama. That's how you got it. That's, said, well, that's, how, got it. that's how I'm so lean. My right, dad. Right. I said, yeah. I said, Genetics. I said, It's good genetics. And so he, we, we had a big laugh. Ronnie was always, you know, really, really, you know, good. It's funny. I was yeah. telling some of these guys who the, the nurses and the CNAs here and they're, they're bodybuilding fans. And uh, or they kind of followed the professional sport by the way. I showed them my picture and they were all excited. And I was telling them, like, you know, Ronnie Coleman. I said, I was telling them so many Ronnie stories that they were dying. They were like, they thought they were in, they were like in heaven. These guys. Like, they were in there <laughs> Forty-five minutes. You see, my problem is I start talking too much, and and then and then I exhaust myself because of it. You know. Right. Right. But I feel like I have to entertain everyone like that because I think if everyone likes me, that they're, they're gonna. They're going to bend over backwards to do more stuff for me, which is really is the truth. But yeah. that's true. <laughs> yep. Ultimately, that's I, just, true. I call it the hospitality gene I have in me. Some people, <laughs> my father didn't want to talk. As soon as my father would get to the hospital, he would create animosity between everyone there. any And especially any Asian people, any Asian oh, women right. who were working there. He hated them. He would not have any respect for them. Whatsoever. Wow! Really? Why? Yes, I don't know. It maybe was something relating back to the Korean War. I don't know. The war, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And he loved the the the, the big heavy set black women. They they wouldn't take his shit. They was he loved them. They would be like, Sal, get your get your butt in that in that bed. I don't want to hear any crap from you. And he would he would listen to them. If they the Asian, loved said, the Asian woman would say, Oh, Mr. Palumbo, oh, let me help uh, put the. Uh, get away from me! You're annoying me. You know? <laughs> I'm like, Dad, stop making enemies here. I said, you're, you're, these people are taking care of you every day. Right. Why do you want to have this 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 combative relationship with them? Those Hold those big. Hello. Hi, you Can you give me like ten minutes? Yes, sir. Cool. All right, great. The, the, said, the, the, you, go ahead. I said these people are, are taking care of you. I said you gotta kiss their butts so that they want to. I'm not kissing anyone's butt. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, those those big, heavy set black women have a demeanor about them, and they love me no matter where I am. If I the yeah. car rental counter, I always get an upgrade. <laughs> the, the, anywhere I, I am, I'm telling you, Valerie sends me in first. She goes, "I'm going to wait in the car because you'll get the upgrade." <laughs> <laughs> I, I do too. They, 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 like, they like guys who work out. That's why they but, love me. So yeah. yeah. But, but he yeah, was terrible. Anyone foreign with an accent, he was te he was terrible I, with. I didn't know that about him. I'm surprised. I didn't know him there. Yeah, I don't. And my father was smart. I, I don't know what it was. He he. I think my father thought he was just a little better than everyone. And he he just. I don't know. He just had this like we. And and, he, and my funny thing was he was not a racist. My father. No. He, he you know he taught black people mostly most of his life, and he and he actually really liked them and had friends. He just didn't like to be in, in a situation where he was being served by people who were not, um, I don't know. I, I don't even know what, I don't even know what the answer is. I, I think he just didn't want to be in the hospital. So he took it out on the people who were there rather than oh, say, yeah, well, that makes sense. You know, yeah. maybe I should be nice to these people so that they take care of me, you know? And so he's should, always complaining. Yeah. yeah. I would always go in there and I, <laughs> I would be like apologizing and they're like, Oh, we don't believe me. We got plenty of these guys. We, we know we know how to handle them. Don't worry about it. And the funny thing was, what one of the heart, the heart surgery my father had when he had triple bypass, um, I won't mention his name, but he he's he's a guy that he, you know sells a little bit of gear and he's a bodybuilder himself. Really, really nice guy. He was like the uh, one of the guys that working on the floor uh, where my father was. He was like he used to always tell me whenever I come down. We really weren't friends at that point, but he's like, I got your dad's back. Don't worry about it. He goes, no one's messing with your dad. I I, I tell everyone. Sal is connected. I say, don't don't mess with Sal. <laughs> don't mess with Sal. <laughs> My father didn't even know he was doing that. That's probably why they were treating him so nice. You know? <laughs> Out of fear. <laughs> and you know what? Like ten years later, he came into my office in in, uh, in Westbury up there, and and we were talking because he was buying some supplements. He's like, you know, you remember I was the guy who was working in, in the hospital, you know, when your father was in there. I said, oh, I said, I didn't even, you know, I, you look so familiar, and I, and I see him in the gym every day. I, oh, we started training at the same gym. I didn't realize it was him. And when he reminded me of that, I said, oh, thanks for taking care of my dad. He's like, no, I had, I had his back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> some, some people respond well in a hospital setting. Some people completely reject it and, and go crazy. And I, and I say it's, it's the same thing. Some people who go to jail, same thing. They can't handle it. They, they become the, the person who's always getting in trouble and the person who's always in the hole. 
it doesn't if you're if you're put in a situation where you have no control over anything resign yourself to what you're doing and just just deal with it I, there's no fighting it is not gonna is not gonna you know help the situation it's only gonna make it worse right um, i might make jokes about certain things that i think are ridiculous that they're doing here but but i never ever blame it on the people who work here or anything like that because once you do that you make a, a miserable experience for yourself Plus, if you can get good pain meds, it's a nice place to lay around and be doped up, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, after, after, after my last bad motorcycle crash, I was in the hospital for a few days. And, mm -hmm. you know, initially it's like, I'm angry. I don't want to be in there. I can't believe this happened, you know? And it's right. all, and then after a while, then you succumb to, to it. And I'll, yeah, I'll take three more of those Dilaudids and um, <laughs> uh, can you give me the TV remote? You know? <laughs> I tell everyone surrender and you know what don't be afraid to get procedures done that you need done yes because I don't want to see anyone dying unnecessarily it, it, look if I can go through this and get through it uh in one piece and come out on the other side and tell you guys it was not that terrible was would I want to do it again no I really would not I'm not looking wouldn't look forward to be doing it again um but you we can get you can get through anything if you put your mind to it and don't be afraid. There's no reason you should walk around like a time bomb waiting to go off, right. you know, and, and have a problem. I can't, I, I don't know who I was telling just, just the other day we were talking about, I'm like, I'm like, you haven't gotten a cardiac CT scan to see how your coronary arteries are. He's like, no, you think I should? I said, yeah, why not? It's 59 bucks. I said, right. you know, Richie Gasparri, you know, found out he had a hundred percent blockage in his, in his coronary arteries. He didn't even know it. Saved his so, life. Saved yeah, his life. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's Bell funny. I told him I told him what was, what was going on with you because you know, he asked me yeah. like what's going on with Palumbo? He's in there getting open yeah. heart surgery. I'm not, not, not. So, I, so I I told him about that and he goes, "Shit, man, I got to go get mine checked." <laughs> it doesn't hurt if you get a cardiac CT scan with contrast. That's a, that's one step up from the cardiac CT calcium yeah. score. It will tell you everything you need to know about your coronary arteries. It'll measure the diameter of your aorta. They'll check your valves and it'll give you a really good readout on what's going on in your body, you know. And I and, and like I said, you don't have to do it every year. You do it every five years or so. This yeah, way, yeah. you're not caught by surprise by something going wrong. And then you because the, the uh, let me tell you something. The worst thing is to find out is when you're laying on the floor. And, yeah, and exactly. Nine one one is coming with the ambulance. That's not when you want to find out that there's something wrong with you. You want to know ahead of time so that you can plan on your schedule. And on your terms, how to right. take care of it. And it's not an emergency because right. nothing gets done well in a hurry. No, they just crack you open. Right. Remember Chris Dim? Chris Dim had uh, he had an aortic dissection in the gym, and luckily he survived it. And but he, you know, it was, they had to crack him completely open. You know, I got a little partial incision because you know I planned mine. Now, granted, the diagnostic tests were not the same in the '90s like you know it is today. So Chris sure. didn't have the luxury of that, but. You know, this Boston Lloyd died because of an aortic dissection. I mean, there's no reason he should have died. You know, his, his father, father and his father lived because he had done what you had done. Yeah, and his father told me that you know when he looked at the results of his of Boston's, no one had said anything to him about the, it being screwed up. And you know what? His measured almost the exact same as mine did. Wow. So, you know, it's it's you know it's scary, but it's not scary because if you follow and do all these diagnostic tests and you find out that you're in the clear. Then you can go and train and do whatever you got to do, live your life, and you don't have to worry about anything. Not knowing is way, 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 way worse. Trust and everything's me. a crapshoot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Well, John, uh, I'm glad we got to talk on this little Friday afternoon here for yeah. a, uh, another episode of Rips and Rants. Uh, hopefully, I'll be out of the hospital for the next edition next week. <laughs> but uh, I'm you'll be holding forward to that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be good. You'll be <laughs> holding the fork out for after hours on Tuesday. I'll be probably doing a uh, heavy muscle with Sid and uh, Chris on Sunday. And after that, we should be back to normal scheduling for now. I'm Dave Palumbo with John Romano from health park hospital in Fort Myers, Florida. We'll see you next week.